being deaf is one of the biggest disabilities in the UK. Do you know what I mean? I think there's 12 million deaf people in the UK. If I could just pass on a small percentage of that to anyone that might look at me and see me as you know, an inspiration, that would be massive for me and I think that's what I pride myself on. People who are watching this will know that you've not got a Mancunian accent. So what do you say to people who say, why are you a City fan but you're not from Manchester? You know, what made you be a City fan? My dad's from Manchester, so it's the, it's the plainest reason, you know, I get a lot of stick for it because I, not because of my accent and where I'm from, but it's something that I'm really passionate about um, and I'm never afraid to, you know, explain why I'm a City fan. And I think once you had that conversation, the barrier breaks straight down because obviously you share one love and the shit and the love's obviously City. Like my dad been a season checker older now, I think it's about 40 years. And I'm sure he'll tell you his story. Obviously, I'm a, I, I, I'm a Mancunian who married a Scouser um, 33 years ago. And before we got married, I did say to my lovely wife, <laughs> I did say, there is no chance with when, when and if we have children that I will be going in either to Goodison or Anfield. And um, he's stuck they, by it. They will be supporting Man City. I'm always very proud to say that I come from a very sporty family in a sense that, I mean, my dad was a powerlifter when he was growing up, but he was also an avid footballer. And his best mate being my godfather, Eric Nixon. My cousin, recently, my, is the most recent one, is probably Anthony Crawler, which will be a familiar face and name for a lot to know. There's pictures and videos of me when I was younger and whether it was walking from you know, for me mum and dad down to me nan, which is only three or four streets away, but I was walking with a football on my feet, you know what I mean? My dad was always about get out there and practice um, the old fashioned way. He was having a first birthday party and he ran along with a ball, knocking it between two feet. And I looked and I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So we were always competitive about um, grades at school. Um, I'd like to say I've got higher education than him. Thank you. <laughs> but not when it comes to sport. We were just so proud of each other that we just wanted each other to shine. I was a striker going through the years when I was at academies um, and then when I signed my scholar, I'd done my uh, YTS at Fleetwood and that's when things started to drop. I went into the 10. I played the old game of centre-back for like in the recent years, um, I think that's just getting older though. <laughs> when we found out Gina was deaf, he took to it, kept getting told off by the audiologist that he was wearing his hearing aids 24 7, um, and they said they needed to give his ears a rest. Yeah. But it was part of him, and that's all we've ever instilled in him is it's part of him, it shouldn't define them. It shouldn't define him at all, and he's embraced that. So, do this and then I'll do a little body weight thing. Yeah. He's achieving a dream now. Immensely proud, immensely proud of him and his sister because the moment they take to anything they do, it doesn't matter whether it's sport or anything else, they just commit 100% um, and it just shows in the people they are today. So we don't get away with more trying to hear, but... What's the difference between Deaf football and would you say hearing football? What would be the difference between? So um, we always say the the only difference. Well, I always say the only difference is differences are it's a visual aid. So when the referee is using the whistle, they will also use a flag. So obviously we get to react to the lines and we'll always play a part. You play without your hearing aids. Um, so obviously that again takes away one of our senses, um, but. The reason we play without our hearing is it's a level playing field then, because there's different levels of hearing. I'm a very vocal, very kind of loud talker on the pitch because I played mainstream or hearing football all my life. 
naturally I've been one of those who talks all the time. So there's some players who actually now and again can hear my tone of voice. Uh, but the taking of his needs away just completely levels it out as best as you can. If you speak to any of my managers, they'll always say I'm, I'm, I'm a jack of all trades, you can put me anywhere on the pitch and I'll put 110% in. My position at the minute for England is centre mid. I was at a game and I bumped into someone from City in the community and they were talking about setting up a deaf team. Uh, they had all the para squads there, the amputees, the uh, pan disability, um, so on and so forth. So I went down just to see what it was about. On the night, I remember being called Kevin De Bruyne is, um, or Scouse De Bruyne or whatever it was, and I think there's an article that's been written where that's, that's been used. And then I got an email to say there was an open trial at England, and I actually turned around, and it was at Wolverhampton training ground, and I actually turned around and I said, said to my dad, I, I'm not feeling it. And he was like, well, what have you got to lose? So I was like, okay. So we went down one Sunday morning. Got there and I was absolutely taken back by the level, the, the, the quality that we've got. Obviously, next, next, like next level. And then it just kicked on from there. And then I got the text from the manager at the time to say, "Listen, we want you in for the Euros in 2019." It's been a learning curve for me. I've had to learn sign over the last four or five years. Being deaf is one of the biggest disabilities in the UK, do you know what I mean? I think there's 12 million deaf people in the UK, do you know what I mean? I've just recently come back from the Deaf Champions League in Warsaw. Obviously, deaf community was massive there, um, and being able to communicate with other people from other countries just through the use of sign is massive. Obviously, the accent doesn't help, because yeah. I talk really fast, you know? So a lot of the people sometimes are like, well, slow down. but. We're getting there, we're getting there. I think he's also inspired by how other people overcome the challenges, other people with hearing loss overcome the challenges. He loves paying it forward. A dad was trying to find a club for his kids who had hearing loss. And Gino helped sort all that out because that's who he is. To pride myself on being a positive influence and a, a positive role model, I think, you know, I think being a teacher kind of falls into that as well, being a PE teacher. So it always melts my heart when I see a young deaf girl or boy come into my company and they notice straight away that I'm deaf. Seeing their reactions when they see me as a teacher or the parents' reactions or seeing me as a coach, they know straight away that they can relate to me for the starters. And then secondly, there's room for them to be able to be inspired by and also aspire to be someone like myself. So there'll be one, two, three balls. Every young lad wants to be a footballer. Every young lad wants to live the dream. Not every young lad can do it. England has given him the opportunity where he's respected as a footballer to live that dream. If I could just pass on a small percentage of that to anyone who, not just deaf kids, but other other people that might look at me and see me as, you know, an inspiration, um, then it's, that that would be massive for me, and I think that's what I pride myself on.